Welcome. So we have a lot of cases in which we have isosceles triangles, squares, diamonds, things like that. I wanted to use a perfectly randomized section of discrete stuff for our two charges that are going to be acting on a recipient charge. We want to find the uh, final charge on that. And we know from our organized step that the force electric is going to be K, charge of the actor, charge of the recipient, over the distance squared in the direction from the actor. And what I want to do is I want to approach this using r vector to really help us understand r squared and most especially r hat. So what we can do is we can draw in our sketch the vector r1 from q1 to our recipient. And we can draw a separate vector r2 from q2 to our actor, to our recipient q. And we'll solve these each individually. So we are going to say that our q recipient is 3 microcoulombs charge, and it's at 1, 2 centimeters away from the origin. We are going to say that our charge Q1 actor is 5 microcoulombs at negative 3, positive 3 centimeters from the origin. And then we're going to get an example of Q2, also an actor, is going to be negative 7 microcoulombs, and it is going to be located at 4, negative 2 centimeters. So we have all our information in our sketch. In our organized step now, we want to find, right, we have k, we have q, we have q. We really want to find these r vectors. And so that's the important part that we want to look at first. So looking at r1, we can break r1 into the distance we have to go in the x direction times i hat plus the distance we have to go in the y direction times j hat. So we want to count it, but then we also want to come up with a system where our counting works a little bit nicer. So I'm at negative 3. I need to get to 1. I need to go 1, 2, 3, 4 in the positive x direction. So I can write this as 4 centimeters plus i hat. I need to go from positive 3 to 2, so I need to go down 1. And so I can write that as 1 centimeter in the negative j hat. If we want to do this right as we feel better and better about it, how did we get positive 4? Well, we took the final position of q plus 1, and we subtracted the position of q1. So this would be right qx minus capital Q on x, this is 1 minus negative 3, right, times i hat. And then for the y, same thing, qy positive 2 minus q1y positive 3 in the j hat. So now I can use this term for my r1. Because with r1, I can find r hat and r squared. r1 squared is just Pythagorean theorem, right? r1x squared plus r1y squared. So 4 centimeters squared is 16, plus 1 squared is 1. So I'd get 17 centimeters squared. Most everyone feels pretty good about that. What everyone is scared about and what we'll encounter right immediately is r1 hat. Well, r1 hat we defined as the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. So now, right, we're dividing by the magnitude. The resulting magnitude is 1. We just have the direction information. But if we've done it how we've done it, then we already have r1. We can just write r1, 4 centimeters plus i hat plus 1 centimeter negative j hat. And we already have the magnitude of r1. It's just the square root of this, so the square root of 17 times centimeters. And nicely enough, luckily enough, the units cancel out. And if we go really hard, we can find out that the uh, magnitude of this is 1. So we can then do this for r2 maybe a little bit faster. So now our r2 is r2xi hat plus r2y j hat. 
So in the x direction, I have to go from 4 to 1. I have to go negative 3 centimeters in the i hat, or 3 centimeters negative i hat. From negative 2 to positive 2, I have to go 4. So I have to go 4 centimeters in the positive j hat, which gets me that r2 squared is 3 centimeters squared, which is 9, plus 4 centimeters squared, which is 16. So my r2 squared is 25 centimeters squared. And then again, what we're all fearing to some degree, r2 vector over the magnitude of r2 is going to be 3 centimeters negative i hat plus 4 centimeters j hat over the square root of 25 centimeters, which is 5 centimeters. So again, we can cancel out our centimeters, and hopefully we feel a little bit better. Well, now that I have all this, now I have r1 hat, I have r1 squared, I have q1, I have q, I can find what f1 is. So f1 is going to be k, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared, times q1, 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, times little q, 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, over r1 squared, 17 centimeters squared turns into 10 to the negative 4 meters squared. But I am not done. What's most important is this r1 hat. This is going to tell us how these vectors add. So I have to include it right over here. My r1 hat is 4i hat minus 1j hat over the square root of 17. So I can do all sorts of math if you want me to see it. So we can do, first of all, the exponential math. 10 to the 9, 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 6 gives me 10 to the negative 3 on top. Divided by 10 to the negative 4 gives me just 10 to the 1. So then I can also do, write 9 times 15 divided by 7 times 10 to the 1, and then I still have this 4 i hat minus 1 j hat over the square root of 17. And then write my meter squared, cancel with my meter squared, my coulomb, coulomb, cancel with my coulomb squared. So all of this is in newtons. So we'll just write it out for ourselves. So my F1 vector is going to be 77 i hat minus 19.3 j hat newtons. So let's look at F2. And so we're going to have, write that 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared per coulomb squared. We are going to have negative 7 times 3 gives me negative 21 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared. We're just going to write compress all that. My r squared is 25 centimeters squared, or 25 times 10 to the negative fourth meter squared. And then again, my most important part is this r hat, where I have 3 negative i hat plus 4 j hat over 5. So multiplying all this together gives me negative 189 times 10 to the negative 3 over 25 times 25 times 5 gives me 125 times 10 to the negative 4. And then I just have negative or 3 negative i hat plus 4 j hat. And just for the units, so we feel good about it, meter squared cancel with meter squared, coulomb squared cancel with coulomb squared. So I have newtons all the way back here. That's really nice. Everyone's happy about that. So my force 2 is then going to be negative 189 all this times negative 3 gives me a positive. So 45.4 newtons i hat minus 60.5 newtons j hat. And so my net force My net force is just going to be F1 plus 
plus f2. And if I found this all out, then right, I can just add the two x components together. So I get 77 plus 45.4 i hat in newtons. And then I can just add my two j hats together, negative 19.3 minus 60.5 j hat all in newtons. So then I can just do a little bit of math. Should have given, right, done this all before, but oh well. So 0.4, 5 plus 7 is 2. So 122.4 newtons i hat. And then this 19.3 and 69.5 is going to be negative. 79.8 newtons j hat, and that's going to be my net force. Forgive any arithmetic errors. So what did we do, right? We found these individual things, we're given them, and the easiest thing to do is to find r1 vector and r2 vector, right? The vector for each of your individual agent charges and then to use those to find the r1 squared, the r1 hat, the r2 squared, the r2 hat. From there, we can plug everything into here, just a little bit of calculations, just a little bit of calculations to then get the individual forces. While I'm computing F1, I don't care about Q2. While I'm computing F2, I don't care about Q1. Once I get these two individual forces, if they're in component form, I can just add them, and then I can just add the components together. So, that's why we're doing this, is because it makes this a very consistent, very easy way to do it. And then once we graduate to further and further complicated things, we can keep using this approach instead of having to abandon other approaches.